How are you? This is Mrs. Sims. I've enjoyed getting the pictures and things that you've been sending me as feedback. I've enjoyed getting the Venn diagrams that you've been sending my way and all kinds of activities from the books that we're sharing. The book today that I have for you is another Caldecott Medal award-winning children's book. It is called Song of the Swallows by Leo Politi. This book is set in uh, an area that you may not be familiar with for a setting. It's set in a Spanish mission, and that may not be something that you know very much about. Um, a mission was put together, well, you'll have to see in the book what in, is involved in a mission. Uh, you may have heard of someone named Davy Crockett, who was a famous frontiersman. And um, he had a big battle in something called the Alamo. You could go tour that in San Antonio, Texas, if you wanted to. But anyway, um, the, in the Alamo, the Alamo was actually one of the Spanish missions that you would find in that part of Texas. So Davy Crockett, Alamo, something to do with um, a building called a mission, and this story. All right. This story, again, is a 4.6 AR level book. I'm going to go ahead. I need you to read very, to listen very carefully as I read. I have uh, four or five questions ready for you at the end and a little something I'd like you to draw for me. All right. Song of the Swallows by Leo Politi. At the foot of the low and soft hills near the sea lay the small village of Capistrano. The bells of the mission church were ringing on that early morning of spring. Wine came running down the road through the village on his way to the little school near the mission. He ran through the gardens filled with flowers to the patio of the sacred gardens. There he stopped to speak to old Julian. Buenos dias, Julian. Good morning, Julian. Buenos dias, Juan. Here is a picture of the mission and how it looked. A mission was kind of like a place, a settlement. If uh, you're a fourth grader and you have been to St. Augustine, then you're kind of familiar with what it looks like inside the fort. It's kind of similar to that uh, in that there was always an area around it, a fence around it to protect from animals that might try to come in to protect from uh, people who weren't friendly who might be coming into your town. Uh, everything you would need would be here except for food and people would go outside of the mission complex in order to get food. Uh, they would go outside of the mission complex to get water and to go into the water system that they had put in. They went to school inside this whole big mission area. They went to church inside there. They grew their vegetables and their crops inside the missions. Old Julian was the proud bell ringer of this beautiful mission. Many times had he told Juan the story of the mission, but always it seemed new. Long, long ago, Julian told him, the good brothers of St. Francis came to this country from across the sea. Father Junipero, Sarah, and the brothers walked along the wild trail through the wilderness. With the help of the Indians, they built many mission churches. That is Father Junipero, Sarah, said Juan, looking up at the statue in the garden. He's my friend. The missions were like little villages, Julian said. There the Indians learned to make shoes and harness for their animals, blankets, and hats, tools, and pottery, many of the things they needed in their daily life. Here is the big millstone where they ground corn and wheat. Juan ran his fingers over the big old stone. He liked the feel of it. He liked, too, the little hospital where the fathers used to take care of sick Indians and the barracks for the soldiers who guarded the mission from thieves and pirates.
On his way to school and on his way home, Juan liked to look at the flowers in the mission garden. They were so pretty against the old walls. Julian was also the gardener of the mission. He took much pride in showing Juan the plants, for he knew and loved each one of them. Because he gave them such good care, they grew strong and bore bright, fragrant flowers. Many birds came to the garden to nest, for here they were undisturbed. They flew happily among the trees and drank the fresh water of the old fountain. There were hummingbirds, white pigeons, sparrows, and other kinds of birds. Julian always carried crumbs of hard bread in his pockets to feed them. The pigeons came and perched on his shoulders and on his hands. Some of you would say creepy to that. Others would think that would, was neat. If you've ever been down to Butterfly World, where those butterflies come, you can go in this section where they come and light on you. It may be a similar kind of feeling to having the birds light on him. But the most joyous birds were the swallows. Juan called them by their lovely Spanish name, Las Golondrinas. There were hundreds of them nesting beneath the roof beams above the arches, and their twittering filled the gardens with the sweetest music. They made spring a very happy time in Capistrano. Ever since I can remember, Julian told Juan, the swallows have come in the spring on St. Joseph's Day and gone away late in the summer. But how can little birds know when it is St. Joseph's Day, Juan asked. That I do not know, said Julian. Juan was full of curiosity about the swallows. He watched them build their small mud houses against the beams of the roof. The female sat quietly on her eggs while the male sat, I'm sorry, while the male sang his little twittering song to her. In the evening, Juan saw them huddled close together asleep. When Julian's back was turned, Juan liked to climb the vines to see the nests and count the eggs without touching them. When the nests were blessed with tiny birds, he liked to watch the parents feed the hungry beaks. There's another picture of the inside of the mission where they're gardening. They did both vegetable gardening and they, they also grew flowers and things like that. The best time of all was when the old swallows taught the baby birds how to fly. One morning Juan and Julian watched a family of young swallows seated in a row on an iron bar across the ark. One by one the old swallows gave them flying lessons. At first, as the little birds tried to flutter, they were so clumsy and awkward. One of them tumbled to the ground. Pobrecito! Poor little one! cried Juan as he ran to pick him up. He held the baby bird close and soothed him. When they found he was not hurt, Julian set him back on the iron bar. The little swallow seemed eager to get back to his nest. Perhaps he felt that it was feeding time. One day late in the summer, Julian noticed that the swallows were noisier and more excited than usual. It seemed as if they were getting ready to leave. Juan, he called, the swallows are leaving us. Juan was sad because he knew he would miss them so much. He felt that he, he knew each one of them, and they were little, dear friends to him. The swallows rose, twittering in the air, and flew toward the south. Juan and Julian watched, motionless until they disappeared beyond the horizon. Juan said, as he always did, when the swallows left, Farewell, Golandrinas, for you we will yearn. May God bless your journey and guide your return. I shall pray for their return, said Juan. The swallows flew down the coastline. picture of the coastline. How wonderful the flight of the swallows is, said 
Julian? Just try to picture, Juan, the hundreds and thousands of miles they travel, high up in the air, looking down over strange and beautiful lands. I believe that of all the creatures, God has given them the most freedom and happiness. But where are they going? asked Juan. Some say to a land far south of us. Some say, some say to a green island in the Pacific Ocean, said Julian. No one really can tell, but I do know, Juan, that they will go where there are flowers and fresh water, streams, and people who welcome and love them. This gave Juan an idea. People who welcome them and love them, I will make a garden in front of my house. Then perhaps the swallows will come there to nest. Juan's house was one of the small old adobe houses of the village. It had been built in the early days of California. During his vacation, Juan began his garden. He had learned so much about it from Julian. First he dug the earth. Then he lined the edges of the garden neatly with large rocks, planted new flowers, and made the old rose bush climb the post of the porch. And always he kept the little pool full of clear water. As the autumn and winter months set in, the colors in the mission gardens became quieter and more subdued. The mission was still lovely, but there was now a feeling of loneliness without the swallows. On his way to school, Juan often stopped and looked up with sadness at the empty nest. There the joyous swallows had lived and played, but now their little houses were still and lonely. Sometimes Juan hummed the song that he had learned in school. The song was called La Gal let me try this again. La Galandrina and it was a song about the swallow birds. When the winter months were nearing an end, new buds began to swell and trees began to bloom again. Soon the blossom, blossoming trees bent gently over the garden walls. They made lovely patterns against the sky and filled the clear air with fragrance. Juan felt he was going through an enchanted garden. Julian worked hard in the gardens, for St. Joseph's Day was coming soon. He wanted the gardens to look at their best for the swallow's return. The sky was tinted red at early dawn on St. Joseph's Day. Soon the sun rose from behind the hills and cast a golden glow over the valley. Juan and his friends came early that morning to greet the swallows. The boys wore their best suits and the girls their newest dresses with flowers and ribbons in, in their hair. They played games, sang, danced, and acted little plays of golden days when the mission reigned supreme over this rich and fertile valley. As the fun fiesta went on, every now and then the children looked up at the sky. Would the swallows come? Hours of waiting and watching went by. Time dragged into the late afternoon with not a swallow in sight. The children became tired and discouraged. Some of them began to leave. Then one, who was standing high up on the column of a broken arch near the edge of the playground, saw some little dots far off on the horizon, kind of like when you see something from a distance and it looks like a little dot, but as it gets closer, it gets bigger. Venine las galandrinas. The swallows are coming. The children jumped up and down with joy. The little dots came nearer. They grew bigger and bigger. Soon, hundreds of swallows circled over the mission. One ran and hugged Julian. The swallows are here. I thought they would never come. They came late. Perhaps they met a storm on the way, but I told you one that they would return. See how glad they are. 
The swallows were very, very much like little folks who had been on a long journey and were happy to be home again. They fluttered and twittered, you know the word twitter in a different sense, they fluttered and twittered joyously and filled the gardens with sweet sound. Juan and Julian went into the garden and rang the mission bells to tell the people of the valley that spring had now begun. The children sang The song that they sang went something like this, and I'll just give you the words to it. Good morning, Mr. Swallow. Come from far away. We are glad to see you on St. Joseph's Day. Flitting in the sunshine, we, we can see you all building up your houses on the mission wall. Suddenly, Juan remembered something and was anxious to get home. Buenas tardes, Julian. Good evening, Julian, he said and hurried down the road to the village. As he reached home, he was happier still because what he had hoped for had come true. Two swallows were fluttering about his garden. They had come there to nest. Can we see them in this picture? That night, when Juan looked out of his window, he saw the two swallows asleep on the rose vine. They were so near that he could feel the throbbing of life through their little bodies. He loved them, for they were two dear friends who had come to live close to him for a long while. From afar, in the peace and quietitude, ooh, that's a good word, quietitude of the moonlit night, Juan could hear a warm voice singing. It was Julian singing the swallow song. All right, I have a few questions for you. Number one is, what are missions? I kind of describe them a little bit to you. You heard uh, about the mission as a setting. Uh, for number one, can you write down what you think a mission is? Number two, what four things did the children do on St. Joseph's Day? There were four things mentioned in the story that the children got together to do on St. Joseph's Day. What was that? Yes, they did sing together. That was one of the four. Okay, your next question, what time of the year did the swallows come? So if you're a kindergartner listening to this, you might want to review your um, times of the year, winter, summer, spring, and fall. Okay, um, since swallows are birds, what time of the year do you think you would see birds? There were hints throughout the story what type, kind of, um, what time of the year, excuse me, you would find these birds coming, these swallows coming to visit. Write down the time of the year, winter, summer, spring, or fall. Okay, next, your next question. What did Juan and Julian do in the garden to let the people of the valley know that this particular season had started? I'm not going to give you the season because you just filled that in with your last question. Um, but let me mention this one again. What did Juan and Julian do in the garden to let the people of the valley know this season had started.
if you need a hint, you need to be a you would want to be able to hear this. Whatever they did, you would want to be able to hear. Okay. Next, um, we know that a swallow is a kind of bird. And um, when I was reading this, I tried to show you the different drawings of the swallow birds. So right now, I would like you to do me a drawing of the swallow bird. I'm going to reach over and get the book back. Hold on just a second. And I'm going to show you some pictures of the swallow just in case you were listening to the story and not really looking at the pictures much. So here, here are some swallow birds. You can stop and try to draw these now if you like. Okay, I'm going to pull out some other pictures in here that might help you with that. These are smaller, but you see these the other birds shown here, the swallows. And then these are some better up close pictures of the swallows. Okay, before we close out, um, I want to go back and help you with a few of the questions that I ask you about the story. Um, the four things I mentioned about them singing you also could have written down that they played games together, they danced, and they acted out plays together. All right, I want you to go ahead and make sure that you're answering the other questions. If you want to use colored pencils or crayons um, to draw your swallow bird or a group of swallow birds, that would be fine. I'm enjoying looking at the pictures and the work that you're returning to me. Please make sure that you are logging that in um, on your specials log. Remember that I am posting these and you can feel free to keep checking under the resources section um, so that you're able to pull down all of the videos as they're being posted and, um, and spend time with them. I appreciate the chance to do this. This is a lot of fun. Have a great evening.